nothing special. Nothing special at all. It amazes me that in these chests you get decent things, and in these, or behind these expertly locked doors you get nothing special. It should be a bloody 500 gold pieces and, you know, all the shebangs, the bells and whistles. Right, where are we going next? Hello, is we going past the ah, okay. Oh Send him more flying today, yes, he's dragging getting lessons in gymnastics. Oh Whoosh Whoosh <laughs> That's a bit of fun, you know. Oh! Oh! Oh, I hit... Oh, oh! Bit of confusion there. About who hit who. <laughs> I thought I hit the, the uh... The Adrian arc, but I might have just timed it well. They may spring a surprise on you at any moment. Shave your eyebrow off with a string of an axe. And I really do like my eyebrows. Whoa! Ah, too much. Ah! This looks like an overlord! Oh my god! Cult Caramel! Oh! I'm, I'm sorry! <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. <sighs> right, it's gonna call for a little friend again to assist us here. What? Are we locked in? What is it? What? What? I'm running away. Why is everybody running with me? Somebody do something about this. Oh my god, this is very bad. Um Back to the help. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Yes, come and help us. Sorry, Belina, I didn't mean to do that. Do you want to help me out, Buster? He's trying to kill me over there. Chop him up! Berlina, move! Move, Berlina! I have it! Con I have it! I have him! Don't walk in front of me like that! <sighs> Prepare to die! <sighs> I'll give you a high five, but you probably want to take my head off, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, that's all he has on him. He's a named character that was an absolutely tough guy to kill, and he has six gold pieces and a crappy axe. Injustice, I feel. Is that a what? Is, is am I hearing the uh, uh, lo oh, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm feeling it. I've come the wrong side of it. That's how much I'm feeling it. Oh, okay.
kill marked for death. Ring of pure mixtures. Potions are twelve percent more powerful. Not bad, not bad. I'll let you off. Not bad. Take it all. Frida. Who's Frida? Take a look. Where does she reside? She resides in Dawnstar. Ah, I see. Well, uh, if we're ever passing by that location, <laughs> any time in the future, uh, we shall remember to drop it off, but I don't think we are going that way. We don't plan to anyway, what's this? That is the way out, but before we go out, there is also another way down here, uh, is there? Yes, under here, there we go. I don't know where it leads. But it need exploring. Uh nope. Nothing of note. Come on, Brina, let's go. I honestly thought we were gonna go out to the sky in there, but nope. Just Seems like an alternative way back into Forsaken Cave where we shall have to backtrack and then exit. Or maybe we can actually. Ah, the part with the bears. That's not too bad. See you later, pals! Ah, define logic. The charge level of a staff is based on the corresponding skill, so a wizard high destruction would get a lot of uses from a I didn't know that. So the higher you are in the spell school, the more uses you get out of that particular school staff. Okay. It's 624. Berlina, we must really press on to where we are going next, and that is Whiterun. We are about halfway to Whiterun. Still a little while to go. So uh, we're going to set off. And whilst I am setting off and about to head to Whiterun for a rest and an evening of fun and games in the, uh, in the Bad of Mare, some recuperation, and then tomorrow we shall head out once again on to more adventure. Whilst we are walking back, I shall recall the story of the Mystery of Talara Part 2. Mystery of Talara Book 2 by Mira Lykith. She felt nothing. Darkness enveloping her body and mind. Pain surged through her leg, and with that sensation a great feeling of cold washed over her. She opened her eyes and saw that she was drowning. Her left leg would not move at all, but using her right one and her arms, she pulled herself up towards the moons above. It was a long way through the swirling currents that wrenched back at her. At last she broke the surface and sucked in the cold night air. She was still close to the rocky shoreline of the capital city of the Kingdom of Camlorn, but the water had carried her quite a ways from the point where she fell at Cavalsty Rock. Not fell, she thought, correcting herself. She had been pushed. Further down current, she allowed herself to drift. There, the steep cliff walls sloped lower until they were close to the water's edge. The silhouette of a large house on the shore loomed ahead, and as she neared it, she could see smoke rising from the chimney and the flicker of firelight within. The pain in her leg was great, but greater still was the chill of the water, 
the thought of a warm half-fire was all the motivation she needed to begin swimming again. At the shore's edge she tried to stand, but found she couldn't. Her tears mixed with the seawater as she began to crawl across the sand and rock. The simple white sheet, which had been her costume at the flower festival, was tattered and felt like a weight of lead across her back. Beyond the point of exhaustion she fell forward and began to sob. Please, she cried, if you can hear me, please help. A moment later the door to the house opened and a woman stepped out. It was Ramka, the old lady she had met at the flower festival, the one who had started and cried, It's her! even before she herself knew who she was. By contrast, when the old woman came to her, this time there was no glimmer of recognition in her eyes. By Sethiot, are you hurt? Ramka whispered and helped her up, acting as her crutch. I've seen that gown before. Were you one of the dancers at the flower festival tonight? I was there with Lady Gillia Rays, the daughter of the king. I know. She introduced us, she groaned. I called myself Gina of Daggerfall. Of course. I knew you looked familiar somehow, the old woman chuckled, and led her hop by hop across the beach and into the front door. My memory isn't as good as it used to be. Let's get you warm and have a look at that lake. Ramka took Gina's soaking rags and covered her with a blanket as she sat at the fire. As the numbness of the chill water began to leave her, it cruelly abandoned her to the intense agony of her leg. Until then, she had not dared to look at it. When she did, she felt vomit rise at the sight of the deep gash, fish-white dead flesh, plump and swollen. Thick arterial blood bubbled up, splashing on the floor in streams. Oh dear, said the old woman, returning to the fire. That must rather sting. You're lucky that I can still remember a little of the old healing spells. Ranka seated herself on the floor and pressed her hands on either side of the wound. Gina felt a flare of pain and then a cool soft pinching and prickle. When she looked down, Ramka was slowly sliding her wrinkled hands towards one another. At their approach, the lesion began to mend before her eyes, flesh binding and bruises fading. Sweet Kinnereth, Gina gasped, you've saved my life. Not only that, you won't have an ugly scar on your pretty leg, Ramka chuckled. I had to use that spell so many times when Lady Julia was little. You know, I was her nursemaid. I know, Gina smiled, but that was a long time ago, and you still remember that spell? Oh, when you are learning anything, even the School of Restoration, there's always a lot of study and mistakes. But once you're as old as I am, there's no longer any need to remember things. You just know. After all, I've probably cast it a thousand times before. Little Lady Gillia and the little Princess Talara were always getting cut and bruised. Small wonder, the way they were always climbing all over the palace. Gina sighed. He must have loved Lady Gillia very much. I still do, Ramka beamed, but now she's all grown and things are different. You know, I didn't notice it before because you were all wet from the sea, but you look very much like my lady. Did I mention that before when we met at the festival? You did, said Gina. Or rather, I think you thought I looked like Princess Talara. To attack Kingsgrove. Oh, it would be so wonderful if you were the princess returned, the old woman gasped. You know, when the former royal family was killed and everyone said that Princess Talara was killed, we never found the body. I think the real victim was Lady Gillia. Her little heart just broke, and for a while it looked like her mind did too. What do you mean? asked Gina. What happened? I don't know if I should tell a stranger this, but it's fairly well known in Camelot, and I really feel like I know you. Ramka struggled with her conscience and then released. Julia saw the assassination, you see. I found her afterwards, hiding in that terrible bloodstained throne room, and she was like a little broken doll. She wouldn't speak. She wouldn't eat. I tried all my healing spells, but it was quite beyond my power. So much more than a scraped knee. Her father, who was then Duke of Alloyd, sent her to a sanitarium in the country to get well. That poor little girl, cried Gina. It took her years to be herself again, said Ramka, nodding, and in truth she never really returned altogether. 
You wonder why her father, when he was made king, didn't make her his heir. He thought that she was still not exactly right, and in a way, as much as I would deny it, he is correct to think so. She remembered nothing, nothing at all. Do you think, Gina considered her words carefully, that she would be better if she knew that her cousin, the Princess Salado, was alive and well? As steward. Ramka considered it. I think so, but Excellent. maybe not. You've Sometimes it's best service. not to hope. Here is your reward. Gina stood up, finding her leg to be as strong as it looked to be. Her gown had dried, and Ramka gave her a cloak, insisting she protect herself against the cold night air. At the door, Gina kissed the old woman's cheek and thanked her, not only for the healing spell and for the cloak, but for everything else of kindness she had ever done. The road close to the house went north and south. To the left was the way back to Camlorn, where secrets lay to which she alone held the key. To the south was Daggerfall, her home for more than twenty years. She could return there, back to her profession on the streets, very easily. For a few seconds she considered her options, and then made her choice. She had not been walking for very long, when a black carriage drawn by three horses bearing the imperial seal, together with eight mounted horses, passed her. Before it rounded the wooded pass ahead, it stopped suddenly. She recognised one of the soldiers as Norbooth. Lord Strail's manservant. The door opened, and Lord Strail himself, the Emperor's ambassador, the man who had hired her, and all the other women to entertain at court, stepped out. You! he frowned. You're one of the prostitutes, aren't you? You're the one who disappeared during the flower festival. Gina, am I right? All that is true. She smiled sourly. Except my name, I've discovered, is not Gina. I don't care what it is! said Lord Strail. What are you doing on the South Road? I paid for you to stay and make the kingdom merry. If I went back to Camlorn, there are a great many who wouldn't be merry at all. Explain yourself, said Lord Strail. So she did, and he listened. So there you go. There you have it. Part two of the story of the mystery of Talara. More to follow in due course. So here we are once again inside the warm and welcoming Bannered Mare, where it is always full to the rafters of people, no doubt chatting about the day's affairs. So we're going to sit down, grab a bite to eat, and then engage in conversation with the others and tell them about our latest exploits in life. So join me next time when we shall no doubt head out early in the morning. Where are we going, you say? Well, first part of call, I think, is going to be Serpent Bluff Redoubt, where we shall retrieve Lisbeth's shipment. And then, if we have time, might even move on one step further to maybe trying to find Red Eagle's sword. But we'll see how timing goes. But definitely the first part of call is here. So, join me next time for that. See you soon.